بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشار الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار بارك الله فيكم جميعا وأحسن الله إليكم مرحبا بكم أهلا وسهلا الشيخ طالب فوزان he mentioned in relation to the author saying in the statement of Umar that there is no excuse for anyone Sheikh Ali Fawzani says لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ بَيَّنَ الْحَقِّ وَفَصَّلَهُ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَالصُّنَّةِ فَلَا أُذْرَ لِأَحَدٍ حِينَ إِذَنْ فِي دُلَالَةٍ لِأَنَّ التَّقْصِيرِ جَاءَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ حَيْثُ لَمْ يَبْحَثْ عَنِ الْحَقِّ وَلَمْ يَسْأَلْ أَهْلَ الْإِذْنِ فَالدُّلَالِ جَاءَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ فَهُوَ الَّذِي فَرَّطَ Sheikh Ali Fawzani says that is because Allah has clarified the truth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained the truth in detail in the Qur'an as well as in the Sunnah. So in that case, there is no excuse for a person being upon misguidance. Meaning, after Allah has clarified the truth in the Qur'an and the Sunnah, there is no excuse for a person being upon misguidance. Why? Because the negligence or the shortcoming has come from the individual himself. Being that he did not search for the truth, nor did he ask the people of knowledge. So him, the person being upon misguidance, has come as a result of his own actions. I mean, it has come from him. So he is the one who was negligent. And this is what was mentioned earlier. And Sheikh Saleh Fawzan clearly here is from those scholars of Ahlul Sunnah who state that the person who is ignorant due to negligence, that the person is not excused. Because the person himself is at fault. The individual is the cause of his own ignorance. Because the individual did not search for the truth, nor did the individual ask the people of knowledge when the individual had the ability to do so. So the blame is on the person. And the person is not excused. So ignorance is not an excuse in all cases. Ignorance is not an excuse in all cases. When it comes to the affair of negligence, a person is not excused for being ignorant when it is due to negligence. Sheikh Salih Fawzan then mentions the statement of the author, Hasibaha Huda, that there is no excuse for a person who is on misguidance who thinks it to be guidance. 
الشيخ فيه بيان أن الظن لا يغني من الحق شيئا والله جل وعلا يقول وإنهم ليصدونهم عن السبيل ويحسبون أنهم مهتدون Shaykh Salih Fawzan, he says, in this statement of the author, there is a clarification that conjecture does not suffice a person in any affair from the truth. As Allah mentions, that indeed they prevent them from the path thinking that they are guided. The Shaykh, he says, حسبانهم لا يشفع لهم لأنهم ليس لهم أضر He says their thoughts will not intercede on their behalf meaning will not get them excused because there is no excuse for them just because a person may think something to be a certain way it doesn't mean that the person is going to be excused for that rather it is upon the individual to search for the truth. And if the individual does not have the ability himself or herself to look into the evidences and the aqwal of the scholars of al-Islam regarding a particular affair, then it is upon that individual to do what Allah has commanded, and that is to ask the people of knowledge when one does not know. But the Muslim should not think that because he thinks a matter to be a certain way, that this is going to be an excuse for him or her to be upon misguidance. One's thinking does not suffice the individual from the truth of the affairs. So people have to be very careful about this, especially in these days and times of trials and tribulations, where individuals just take positions because they think that it's the correct position, without properly asking those who know or properly investigating the situation to come to that which is correct for those who have the ability to do so. For individuals with their thinking, unfortunately, they have harmed the religion of al-Islam and they have harmed the outward image of the deen with their thinking or believing something to be correct without any proofs or evidences. Even individuals have harmed others from amongst their brothers and sisters due to their thinking and not having any truth to back up that which they believe a situation to be. And this is from the affairs of falsehood. As the Sheikh said, لأنهم ليس لهم أضر حيث لم يراجع الكتاب والصنة حتى يعرف الحق من الباطل. That there is no excuse for them, being that they did not return back to the book and the صنة in order for them to know the truth from the falsehood. وإنما ركبوا أهواءهم. Rather, they only rode upon their desires. They only rode upon their desires. And this is بارك الله فيكم. A stern warning for the people not to follow their desires in any of the affairs, rather return back to the kitab and the sunnah in all of the affairs, and to place their judgments in the positions that they take based upon the kitab and the sunnah, and not based upon personalities or popularity, or based upon Hezbiya, partisanship, and other than that. Rather, returning back to the book and the sunnah with the understanding of the Sahaba. This is what it means to be upon the methodology of the Salaf. You don't find that the Salaf just followed individuals because they were popular. You don't find that the Salaf just followed individuals because they had the bigger name and the likes. Rather, we find the Salaf being individuals who follow the ilm. Rather, we find the Salaf being individuals who held fast to the principles. And they would go to the scholars who were known for their ilm. It wasn't about the name. 
It was about the knowledge that they possess and the implementation of the knowledge that these scholars were upon, which caused the people to return back to them. How to individuals with names with no implementation and fame with no practice, rather we find individuals having famous names and being popular amongst the masses of the people, but there is a lot of opposition to the sunnah and their statements and their actions when really examined. A person should not be deceived by a person's popularity or a person's name. Rather, the person should look to see is the individual in agreement with the Quran, the Sunnah, and the way of the Salaf. These three fundamental principles, as mentioned by Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, Al Kitab al Munazzal, Wal Nabi al Mursal, Wal Sabil al Salaf, the book that has been revealed, the Prophet who has been sent in the way of the Salaf, these three fundamental principles are that which we use to judge all statements and all actions and all creeds. No matter who it may come from. All statements, all actions, all creeds are to be measured up to these three fundamental principles. The book that has been revealed, the prophet who has been sent, and the way of the Salaf. Sheikh Salih Fawzani mentions the statement of Allah, وَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ And they think that they are guided. The Sheikh says, مَا هَذَا حَكَمَ اللَّهُ بِكُفْرِهِمْ وَضُلَارِهِمْ فَبِمُجَرِّدِ أَنَّ الْإِنسَانِ يَحْسَبُ أَنَّهُ أَرَى حَقٍّ لَا يُسِرُ هَذَا أُضْرًا لَهُ إِلَّا إِذَا لَمْ يَبْلُغْهُ شَيْءٌ مِنَ الْوَحِي الْإِلَهِ الْمُنَزَّلْ عَلَى الْغُسُلْ لِأَنَّ الْوَاجِبَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَرْجِعَ إِلَى الْكِتَابِ وَالْسُنَّةِ ولا يبقى على ظنه وحسبانه فعلى ما يقوله له غيره أنه حق فهذا ليس بأضر and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward our Shaykh Shaykh Salih Fawzan Hafizahu Allah ta'ala for explaining the meaning of this narration he went on to say after quoting the statement of Allah that they think they are upon guidance that even though they think that they are upon guidance, Allah still judged them to be disbelievers. And Allah still ruled upon them that they were upon misguidance. So the mere aspect of a person thinking that he is upon the truth, this is not an excuse for him. Except in the case when nothing from the divine revelation that has been sent down upon the messengers has reached him. And that is because what is obligatory upon the individual is to return back to the book and the sunnah and not to remain upon his thinking or what he perceives matters to be. Nor for the individual to remain upon that which others say to him is the truth. And this is very important. This is not an excuse. See, this is the blameworthy blind following. That an individual just follows a person without proof. Because people are so caught up in the personalities of people and the names of people where they forget to ask for the evidence. Where they forget to find out is this statement or this disposition based upon the kitab and the sunnah. This individual is not excused if he takes a position that is in opposition to the truth because he thought he was correct. No, the person has to return back to the book and the sunnah and judge all affairs with the book and the sunnah. And if a person doesn't have that ability, then let him ask the people of knowledge, the ulama of al-Islam, before an individual takes a position. And this is one of the things that plagues the ummah in this day and time, that people take positions before having knowledge. And people speak before having knowledge. And people act and do and believe things before having knowledge. Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned, Bab al-ilm qabal al-qawl wal-amal. Chapter that the knowledge precedes statements and actions. And it's more unfortunate that we find individuals who have read the statement of al-Imam al-Bukhari, whether in the jami' al-Sahih of al-Imam al-Bukhari, 
Well, they read it, mentioning the three fundamental principles of Sheikh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, and then yet we, find, we constantly see from amongst the people who know this matter, preceding the affair of knowledge, whose statements and actions and positions and creeds. We have to begin to implement what we know. And not just be individuals who are able to quote. And not just be individuals who are able to mention benefits and principles. And not just be individuals who are able to put up posts and the likes or put out tweets and the likes. Where's the implementation? Where's the practice? This dean is not just about talking and posting and translating. Rather, this dean, there has to be implementation and practice and really implementing the principles and holding on to the truth, especially in the times of trials and tribulations. It's unfortunate. It's like it has become like a big show. You know, some of these Allahumusta'an individuals who claim that they are holding on to the truth. It becomes like a big show, like it is a, it's a matter of entertainment in the life. This is our religion. This is our way of life. Barakallahu fikum. And we do not find the ulama of al-Islam behaving in this manner, treating the religion as if it's a matter of entertainment. Rather, we find the ulama of the deen being very serious about holding on to the truth and not preceding the truth with their statements or actions or creed. Rather, we find the ulama being diligent and having knowledge before they speak, and being diligent and having knowledge before they act, and being diligent and having knowledge before they believe anything. And this is what we find the ulama encouraging the people. But unfortunately, individuals who claim to have connections with the ulama, or they claim to love the ulama, or they claim to be from Ahl-Sunnah wa Jama'ah, they oppose the way of the ulama of al-Islam. So it has to be more than just lip service, ikhwan, wal akhawat. When we read these books of the sunnah and we read the scholars' explanation, it should have some type of effect upon our lives. And we should see some change in our lives after increasing in knowledge. It shouldn't be that we are increasing in knowledge and increasing in narrations being memorized by us or we increasing in our memorization of the Quran, but our behavior is still the same. There's no change in our behavior. There's still opposition to the Kitab and the Sunnah, even when we have the proof against what we are doing. This is not following the truth. Shaykh Salih Fawzan, he mentions, وَفِي الْآيَةِ الْأُخْرَى إِنَّهُمْ مُتَّخَذُوا الشَّيَاطِينَ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ That indeed they have taken the shayateen as guardians and protectors besides Allah, thinking that they are guided. Shaykh Salih Fawzan, he said, أُنْظُرْ كَيْفَ اتَّخَذُوا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنْسِ وَالْجِنِ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَيَتَّبِعُونَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ فَهَلَ الشَّيَاطِينَ تُرِيدْ لَهُمُ الْخَيْرِ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّدْ لَهُ شَيْطَارًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينَ انظر قوله وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّدْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا هذا عقوبة له فهو له قرين وإنهم أي الشياطين يصدونهم عن السبيل ويحسبون أنهم مهتدون يحسب الأتباع الأتباع أنهم مهتدون فلم ينفعهم ذلك ولا أذر لهم فيه لأنهم بلغتهم دعوة الرسل فلم يقبلوها شفاني فوزان حفظه الله تعالى he mentions look how these individuals have taken the devils from amongst mankind, the devils from amongst the jinn, as protectors besides Allah, following them and thinking that they are guided. Do these devils want good for them? Allah mentions that whoever turns away from the remembrance of Ar-Rahman, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place for this individual a devil as an intimate companion. So here Allah says that whoever turns away from the remembrance of Ar-Rahman, that Allah will place for this individual a devil as an intimate companion. 
Shaykh Salih Fawzani said, this is a punishment for this individual, meaning a punishment for the person turning away from the remembrance of Ar-Rahman. And what is meant by the person turns away from the remembrance of Ar-Rahman, meaning the person opposes the Book of Allah, and the person opposes the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One shouldn't think that this means that a person didn't make the dhikr after the salat. He didn't say subhanallah 33 times, alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 33 times, and la ilaha illallah wahdahu la shaykh ala lahu muku la wahamu wa ala kuli shaykh ala yeh once. What a person didn't mention ayatul kursi, what a person didn't say alahumma anta salam wa minka salam to the end of the askar. That a person turned, he didn't do this after the salat, so now, He's going to have a shaitan placed with him as an intimate companion. Rather, what is meant that the person turned away from the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which is obligatory upon him to be obedient then. And the person turned away from the obedience of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that which is obedient for him to be obedient to the Messenger, obligatory upon the person to be obedient to the Messenger of Allah and. So the turning away from Ar-Rahman, meaning turns of turning away from his legislation, turning away from his deen, turning away from his obedience, following the ways of innovation, following the ways of sin and transgression, following the ways of the people of disbelief and polytheism. This is what is meant by turning away from the remembrance of Ar-Rahman. And when a person does this, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes this individual by removing his protection from the individual and placing for this individual a shaitan as a qareen, Meaning the shaitan is a companion to this individual who doesn't leave him and, and advises him with evil. So Allah mentions indeed, meaning the shayateen, they prevent them from the path. Meaning that when the shayateen are with the individual, they call the person away from following the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Following the methodology of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and have these individuals to think that they are upon guidance. And this is from the tricks and the plots of the shaitan that are used to mislead mankind. And that is making evil to seem good and fair. Misguidance is guidance. Guidance is misguidance. The sunnah is bid'ah. The bid'ah is sunnah. Tawheed is shirk. And shirk is tawheed. And other than that. So when the shayateen are misleading these individuals, Misleading them to think that what they are upon is guidance and uprightness. But rather what they are upon is sin and transgression and oppression. If they only but knew. So the followers of the shayateen, they think that they are guided. But them thinking to be in, to the individuals who are upon guidance, this doesn't benefit them as the shaykh mentions. And there's no excuse for them regarding this matter. Why? لِأَنَّهُمْ بَلَغَتْهُمْ دَعْوَةُ الرُّسُلْ فَلَمْ يَقْبَلُوهَا Because the call of the messengers has reached them, but they haven't accepted it. What will cause a person to turn away from the truth once the truth reaches the individual? Arrogance. Arrogance is from that which prevents a person from following the truth. Also from the affairs which prevent a person from following the truth having evil companions who advise an individual against following the truth. As in the case with Abu Talib, the uncle of the Prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, without a doubt, he knew that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was truly a prophet and messenger from Allah. He knew this. However, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him while he was upon his deathbed to la ilaha illallah, we have Abu Jahl said to him, are you going to turn away from the Mella of Abdul Muttalib showing the harms of having an evil companion? For he was encouraged to remain upon shirk and to remain upon misguidance and not follow the call which he knew to be the truth. And this is the case of many people because of the peer pressure and the fear of being an outcast and not being with the in crowd, the people continue to follow that which is incorrect knowingly, turning away from the truth. This is from the affairs that cause people to reject the truth. 
Another matter which caused people to reject the truth, people fearing losing status or loss of something that is a dunya we, that if a person was to come out clearly and speak the truth, then this individual have, have the position that he once had and other than that. And this is clearly seen in the story of Heraclitus. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent a letter to Heraclitus calling Heraclitus to the truth. And Heraclitus, after questioning Abu Sufyan, he knew that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was truly a prophet. Based upon the answer that was given to him by Abu Sufyan. But because Heraclitus, after testing his people, he seen that they would not stay with him. And he would no longer have that status if he was to accept Islam out of fear of losing that which is monetary or the worldly possessions or worldly positions, this individual refused to accept the truth that he was called to by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now we must understand, ikhwan wa akhawat, that the truth should be more beloved to us than anything, any position, any money, any status, Rather, it's the truth. Because the truth guides a person to paradise. Whereas falsehood and lies guides to the hellfire. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Alaykum bi sidq. Fa inna sidq yahdi ila al bir. Fa inna al bir yahdi ila al jannah. Wa iyaakum al kazid. Fa inna al kazid. Yahdi ila al fujur, wa inna al fujur yahdi ila al nar. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Upon you is truthfulness. For truthfulness guides to righteousness, and righteousness guides to the paradise. And be aware of lying, falsehood. For indeed, falsehood guides to corruption, and corruption guides to the hellfire. So what should be most important to the individual is that the individual is in agreement with the truth, that he's truthful in his statements, truthful in his actions, truthful in his creed. This is what's most important and most beloved to us, not seeking status and being known amongst the people and having the largest congregation and the largest following. And this, These things are not important. What should be important to the individual if the person is following the haq, for it is more of a benefit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you and the people hate you than the people being pleased with you and Allah being angry with you. This is what counts at the end of the day. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with us, pleased with our actions, pleased with our statements, pleased with our creed pleased with our manhaj and how we go about handling our affairs. Is Allah pleased with this or we'll be too busy worrying about what the people are going to say and how I look in front of so-and-so and so-and-so. And And as long as I have a clean name and clean slate in front of the Mashiach and the likes of these affairs, but at the same time angering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the affairs of falsehood that one is upon and the lies that one is upon it is more of a benefit rather than the best interest of every one of us that our focus should be on pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when it comes to us to say that which is correct and say what's the truth, we say it. When it comes to us to practice and hold on to the truth, we do it. When it comes to us to believe correctly, we believe correctly. When it comes to us to take a position based upon the methodology of the Salaf, we do that. We don't fear the blame of the blameless. Shasari Fawzan, he mentioned 
وإنما الأجر يكون في المسائل الاجتهادية التي يصوغ فيها الاجتهاد فيجتهد الإنسان ويبذل وسعه وطاقته وطاقته في البحث حتى يظن أن هذا هو الحق فهذا مأذور لقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا اجتهد الحاكم فأصاب فله أجران وإن اجتهد فأقطأ فله أجر واحد Şeyh Salih Fozani mentions that indeed the excuse or the pardon is in the affairs of ishtihad, those matters which it is justified and allowed for there to be ishtihad. And in this, in this, in this, in this Sheikh or Sheikh Salih Fozani making this statement, it establishes that there are some matters that it is not allowed for a person to make ishtihad in, like the affairs of aqidah. There is no ishtihad in the matters of Aqidah, because the Aqidah is based upon the text from the Quran, from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there's no room for Ijtihad or no room for Qiyas in the affairs of the Aqidah. The Shaykh he goes on to say that a person he makes Ijtihad, he strives to arrive to the ruling, which is correct, and he exerts his ability and all his resources in searching for the truth until he arrives to the point where he believes that his conclusion is actually the truth. This individual is excused, meaning if his conclusion is incorrect, based upon the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi that when a judge strives to make a ruling and he is correct, then he has two rewards, and when he is incorrect, he has one reward. Shaykh Salih Fawzan, he goes on to state, Hafizahullah, هذا في المسائل الاجتهادية شيخ says this is in the matters of اجتهاد أما المسائل التوقيفية وهي أمور العقيدة فليس لأحد أن يجتهد فيها بل واجب اتباع الدليل ولا مجال فيها للاجتهاد شيخ صالح فوزان said as for the, the matters that are توقيفية and what is meant by توقيفية Meaning that these matters are based upon the text, and they are the matters of Aqidah. Then it is not allowed for anyone to make ishtihad in these affairs. Rather, that which is obligatory is to follow the evidence, and there is no room for ishtihad. The Shaykh then comments from the statement, وَلَا فِي هُدَى تَرَكَهُ حَسِبَهُ ضُلَالًا nor is there an excuse for a person leaving off guidance, thinking it to be misguidance. Shaykh Salih Fawzani said, لَيْسَ الْأَمْرُ عَلَى الْحُسْبَانِ وَالظَّنِ فَيَأْخُذَ ضَلَالَةً يَحْسَبُهَا هُدَى أَوْ يَتْرُقْ حَقَّ يَظُنُّهُ ضَلَالَةً ظَنُّهُ لَا يَشْفَعُ لَهُ لِأَنَّ الْهُدَى وَالْضَلَالَ قَدْ بَيَّنَهُمَ اللَّهُ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وبينهما الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم في السنة وبينهما السلف في سيرتهم وأقيرتهم فالحق واضح ولله الحمد شيخ صالح فوزان حفظه الله تعالى he said the matter is not based upon the person's thoughts to the point that he takes guidance to be takes misguidance to be guidance or he leaves off the truth taking it to be misguidance. Again, the matters are not based upon a person's thoughts so or what a person thinks is correct, and as a result of that, he takes misguidance to be guidance, or he leaves off guidance, thinking it to be misguidance. His thoughts, or what he thinks, is not going to intercede for him, because guidance is in misguidance. These two matters indeed have been clarified by Allah in the Qur'an. And these two matters have indeed been clarified by the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the Sunnah. And likewise, these matters have been clarified by the Salaf in their sirah, in their life, examples and biographies, and in their aqidah, their creed. So the truth is clear, and for Allah is the praise. And of course, this matter, we have to believe that the truth is made clear and that the truth is not something that is hidden and no one knows the truth. Because if that, if that is the case, then that will mean that a 
portion of the religion is lost. And no one knows that matter of the religion. Rather, the truth is known to those who know it. And there will always be a group from this Ummah parent upon the truth. As the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, لا تزال طائفة من هذه الأمة ظاهرين على الحق That is, they will not cease to be a group from my Ummah who was apparent upon the truth. And this will take place until Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sends that wind that will take the soul of the, the remaining believers. But until then, there will always be people who are upon the truth, even though they are the minority. Al Haq, the people of the truth, the people of the Sunnah, they are the minority. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, Bada al Islam wa Gariban, wa Sayyarud wa Gariban kama Bada Fatuba lil Ghuraba. That Islam it began as something strange. And they shall return back to being something strange. Therefore, glad tidings are for the strangers. The meaning of Islam has begun as something strange, meaning when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began his call, his call was considered to be strange because it went against the norms of the society. It went against that which was popular and that which was well-known. And then, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba. And Islam became established. And Islam then spread throughout the world. And no longer were the Muslims the strangers. Rather, the Muslims were established upon their deen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed their state of fear and gave them superiority in the earth. And then after the generations had passed, and the affairs of innovation began to become widespread amongst the ranks of the Muslims. And the people began to leave off the sunnah, sunnah by sunnah. And the people of innovation began to gain superiority over the land. Those who were the people of the sunnah in the midst of the majority of al bidda these individuals are the strangers. So this is what is meant by the second strangeness, that Islam will return back to being something strange, meaning that the people of the truth, the people of the sunnah, are strangers amongst the people of misguidance and the people of deviation. So barakallahu feekum, do not get caught up in numbers. Because it's not the amount of followers one may have. Rather, it is what is the individual upon. This is what counts. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُوا إِلَىٰ أَجْسَامِكُمْ وَأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ وَكَمَا قَالَ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet mentioned that indeed Allah, He does not look at your bodies. And He does not look at your wealth. But Allah, He looks at your heart and He looks at your actions. What is the reason why Allah looks at the hearts and the actions? Allah, He looks at the hearts for the sincerity. And He looks at the actions for the sunnah. So when a person is established upon sincerity and the sunnah, then this is the person who has a good standing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just because a person may outwardly look righteous or appear to be someone who was established upon the deen, or just because a person may have a lot of worldly possessions. This doesn't necessitate that the person is upon the truth. Rather, the one who opposes Allah's religion, but due to a lot of material possessions, the individual thinks that he is upon that which is higher, that which is good, the ulama have mentioned in this individual he has the misconceptions of Fir'aun. 
Because due to the worldly possessions of Fir'aun, this is what he used as a proof against Musa, alayhi salam, that he was the one who was actually upon that which is correct, and Musa, alayhi salam, was upon falsehood. But the reality is that Musa, alayhi salam, he was the one who was working by the revelation, and Fir'aun was the one who was following his desires. Although Fir'aun, he had the army. Fir'aun, he had the riches. Fir'aun, he had superiority in the land. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not with Fir'aun. He was with Musa alayhi salam. And he drowned Fir'aun and his host. And made them a sign for the generations to come. This is a big lesson for us. And we should not be deceived what we outwardly see. Or what outwardly may appear to be the case. Rather, we always must return back to the revelation. And that which is in agreement with the revelation, this is what is considered to be the truth and superior. And that which opposes the legislation, then this is what is the falsehood. Shusali Fawzani says, That the truth is clear, and for Allah is the praise. وَمِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ أَنَّ الْحَقْ وَاضِحٌ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَالسُّنَّةِ وَيَهَدْ لِلسَّلَفِ الصَّالِحِ لَيْسَ فِيهِ غُمُودٌ وَلَا لَبْسٌ كَمَا حَصَرَ لِلْأُمَمِ السَّابِقَةِ لَمَّا طَالَ عَلَيْهِمْ الْأَبَدْ وَالْتَبَسَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْحَقِّ وَهُرِفَتِ الْقُتُبْ وَهُيِّرَتْ أَمَّا هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ فَالْحَقِّ يَبْقَى وَاضِحًا والكتاب والسنة محفوظان من التحريف والتغيير فليس لأحد أبر حين إذن شيخالي فوزان he mentions that from the mercy of Allah that the truth is clear from the kitab and the sunnah and from the guidance of the salaf al-salih there's no ambiguity and no distortion and unclearness in this affair as what has taken place with the previous nation. When the time had passed on them and the truth became obscure, obscured and the books have been tampered with and changed and distorted. As for this nation, then the truth remains clear. The Kitab and the Sunnah are both protected and preserved from distortions and change. So being that that is the case, then there is no excuse for the person. Shastali Fawzan explains the statement of Imam Abu Bahari for Qadbuyina til umur, that the matters have been made clear. Shastali Fawzan, he says, Naam, Qadbuyina til umur. Yes, indeed, the affairs have been made clear. وَلَكِنَّهَا تَحْتَاجْ إِلَى بَحْثٍ وَإِلَى طَلَبٍ However, there are times when the truth is a need to be searched for and sought after. لِأَنْ يَتَعَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانِ وَيَتَفَقَّهُ وَيَأْخُذُ الْإِلْمِ عَنِ الْعُلَمَاءِ And that is that the person, he learns the knowledge and he seeks to gain understanding and he takes the knowledge from the ulama. لَا يَأْخُذُ الْإِلْمِ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ أَوْ عَنْ نِفْلِهِ مِنَ الْجُهَالِ أو المتعالمين أو من القطب بل يأخذ العلم عن أهله لأن هذا العلم يتلقى عن العلماء فالعلم بالتلقي ليس بالأخذ من القطب والقطب إنما هي أدوات فقط للبحث يشرحها العلماء وأما الوصول إلى الحق فهذا يؤخذ عن أهل العلم ويروى عنهم خلفاً أم سلفاً خلفاً أم سلفاً شيخان فوزاني mentioned the person is to take knowledge from the ulama and this is the origin that knowledge is to be taken from the scholars of al-Islam meaning the scholars of ahl sunnah not the scholars of kalam the scholars of philosophy theological rhetoric rather the scholars of ahl sunnah wa jama'ah not the scholars of evil, ulama of su, 
And knowledge is not to be taken from oneself. Nor is knowledge to be taken from the likes of one from the ignorant. Or those who pretend to be learned. Or merely from the books. I mean, the person just doesn't depend upon books. And this has become a fad nowadays. A person, he learns a little bit of Arabic, and now he sees himself as being independent from the ulama. So he doesn't have to go to the ulama in his opinion, in his view, because he knows, he knows Arabic, and he can now read from the books the scholars read from and gain the understanding that they gain. This is from the tricks of the shaitan to put a wedge and a barrier between the people and the ulama. Rather, the people are to take knowledge from its people because knowledge is to be taken from the scholars. Knowledge is attained by the taking of the knowledge from the scholars, and knowledge is not attained by merely restricting oneself to books. Books are appliances that we use for research, that which the scholars have explained. But the affair of arriving to the truth, then this matter is taken from the people of knowledge. So they are to be narrated upon those who came after or those who preceded. وَقَوْلُهُ وَثَبَتَتِ الْحُجَّةِ وَنْقَطَعَ الْعُذْرُ That the proof has been established and the excuse has been cut off. Sheikh Salih Fawzani says, مَا فِي أَحَدٍ أُذْرٍ فَهَذَا الدِّينَ صَارَهُ اللَّهُ مِنَ التَّحْرِيفِ وَالتَّغْيِيرِ وَصَارَ الْحَقُ وَاضِحًا لَا نَبْسْ فِيهِ بِخِلَافِ الْأُمْمِ السَّابِقَةِ فَإِنَّهَا لَمَّا طَارَ عَلَيْهُمْ عَلَيْهَا الْأَبَدُ حَرَّفُوا قُطْبَهُمْ وَغَيَّرُوهَا وَبَدَّلُوهَا فَالْتَبَسَ الْحَقُ وَخَفِيَا Sheikh Salih Fawzani mentioned there is no excuse for anyone for indeed Allah has protected this religion from distortion and change. So the truth has become clear. And there is no ambiguity in this regarding the truth. Different from the previous nations that after some time, these individuals distorted their books and changed their religion. And they changed that which they were commanded with. So the truth became covered up. And the truth became hidden and unknown. Alhamdulillah, this is the end of the statement of Sheikh Saleh Fawzan in relation to the narration habited to Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an and the benefits that have been mentioned by the noble Sheikh Saleh Fawzan hafizahullah ta'ala and it's a must that we take heed to the words of our scholars and take close attention to that which they are saying and examine ourselves to make sure that we are in accordance to that which we are supposed to be upon and that we are in accordance to that which we claim that we are upon and not just being individuals who make claims with no practice or no evidence to back up the claims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us upon the people who truly implement the sunnah in their lives and may Allah make us the true callers to the sunnah and speech and action and in creed وسبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته